five top stories. Yeah, we have we switched it up on you guys. And the first one is quite a doozy. Uh, because this is about a game that we um are anticipating to a certain degree, and that is Anthem. Yeah. Cautiously anticipated. Cautiously, because- yeah, because um EA has been up to a lot of shenanigans lately. Yeah. And definitely. so uh Anthem is it's looking like one of those games that's gonna, you know, be good, but man, their their practices uh lately is like, should I even support these guys? Is, is exactly. The that that is that is the question. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so the story that's coming out this week is that the um, the DLC uh, for Anthem will be absolutely free. Uh, EA yeah. will not be charging for Anthem, uh, Anthem DLC. So any and all expansions um, will be free of charge. And this is to uh, not uh, divide uh, the audience or, or fragment the, right. the, the player base, uh, which is smart, um, right. in my opinion. I'm- I mean, I, I, and I, I can attest to that play, being a Destiny player where, you know, people that don't get the DLC, they, they get left behind. And Oh, yeah, definitely. On, on top of that, get on top of them getting left behind, um, if they finally get it a week, a month, a little bit down the road, it's hard for them to catch up because that initial stuff, it's hard to find people to help you out. I mean, yeah, unless, yeah. unless you're with, in, in a pretty solid clan that has people. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a bit of a grind and it can be discouraging. So I, I I actually kind of like this. Um, I'm definitely anticipating that. I, I think this has been pre-ordered by my uh, game share partner already. Okay. So I'll, I'll definitely be in, in, in Anthem for sure. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic this is going to be just because it's being published by EA. Right. And, and you and you see um, with the announcement that there's going to be free DLC. Now, my question is, where are they going to get that money? Yeah. How are they like how us? how do they plan on recouping uh, and those losses there? Right. Because like you know, you said, DLC, you know, costs money for them to make as well. It, you know? Of course. And and Bioware has said that there wouldn't be loot boxes. But I'm I'm 100 percent positive there's going to be some type of microtransaction. There has to be. Whether it be like the Game Pass pass um, system that's being popularized in games like Fortnite and PUBG and stuff like that, or if it's just straight up cosmetic purchases, because this this is a type of game where people will spend for cosmetics, right? You want to yeah. look different. Want to look different, yeah. And it, I mean, again, when this, I, I'm not a huge fan of microtransactions, but when you're going to give me a living game and you're going to tell me, uh, well, we're going to give you updates and, and free additional content. You got to make your money somewhere. They, they've got to pay for that content. They can't just give it to you and not pay for it. So if, right. that, if that's the t- tact they're going to do, and they're going to do it transparent, where I know I'm going to spend two dollars because I want this particular shader, or it's three dollars for this particular outfit or something, right. I'm fine with that because it, it, it and and it as long as it doesn't affect my progress in the game. Right, and that's another thing I was going to say. Um, there doesn't need to be any kind of microtransactions or purchases based around progression. I don't want to see weapons for sale. Um, I don't want to see power-ups for sale. Like, I don't want to see any of that for sale. Like, if, if it has a price tag on it, it has to be cosmetic uh, only. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, it's pay to win, and it's not fair, and I don't want to play. <laughs> it's, it means skins, mounts, that type of stuff. Right. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. But anything that has any kind of, you know, stat boost enhancement or, or anything, I'm I'm not down for it. And and I, I will say this, and this is something that they that's done in Destiny. They have a cosmetic set of armor that you can actually pay, mm-hmm. but it's at so low a level, it's not usable. Um, and you have to build it up the same way you build normal armor, armor up. It doesn't get any kind of special perks. It's just it's 100 cosmetic to, uh-huh. at, at, at the end of the day, and you can earn it in game if you want. Um, something like that, I wouldn't be mind. I wouldn't mind. So if they can, if you, if it's an exclusive weapon that you can only buy, you got paid two dollars for it, but you buy it at a butt level, and you still have to put work in the game to level it up. As long as that weapon isn't more powerful than a weapon you can get in the game, I wouldn't have a problem with something like that either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, you know, it, it just raises a lot of questions, you know, because they have been all about the Benjamins uh, lately. Well, they and- they broke it. Right? <laughs> Isn't that why yeah. they, they? That's, that's what I'm we, saying. We, that, that's, that's why, why we do our segment, right? Yeah, that's why we have <laughs> this week in loot boxes, boxes. Right. Yeah, that's why we do that because <laughs> EA, you know, decided they wanted to take it too far. 
right uh Way so I, it's like them for them to reel back this much right i don't know it's it seems like it seems unreal <laughs> for them to be reeling back uh to this degree but we'll we'll see we'll see i am i am uh you know cautiously anticipating anthem i will keep my ears um and eyes open when it comes to that game um and if it if it's solid i'm gonna buy it and so will millions of other people and that, and that's something that ea needs to learn above all else make a good game people are gonna buy it right and uh, i'm i'm hoping for them even though they've been fucking up for <laughs> the past i don't know how many years yeah, but, what, what, what uh, i'm more rooting for released? bioware than ea yeah because bioware um from from the outside looks like they're on thin ice exactly the mass effect debacle right and then you know everything that happened after that which you know came from up top with them not being able to you know put out any further dlc finish right. the story uh update the game fix basically, it like they didn't they didn't abandon the game they weren't even given the opportunity to make it better right uh, which is something that isn't foreign to them because of you know remember the changes that they made to the ending of mass effect 3. yeah you know so there, there's no strangers to going back and like going making adjustments and- especially a community outcry yeah yeah exactly but uh we'll we'll see man we'll see um you know my mom always told me if it sounds too good to be true it probably is uh right. so we'll we'll have to wait and see uh if ea has actually learned their freaking lesson out here uh, but yeah let's go ahead and uh look uh or go to uh, our next story, and this was actually pretty interesting as, as well, dealing with uh, a franchise that has been in limbo for about five years, five years. now. Yeah, I mean, um, and, and the thing is, this particular game has got a huge cult. People that play it, they play it. Right, they, they pe- stand by it. <laughs> yeah, people that don't play it, you know, people that have never heard of it, it's, it's just, you know, they just, what is this? But, right. uh, THQ Nordic is still shopping. I don't know where they're getting all the money. <laughs> where where is it coming from? <laughs> um, but Nordic they, Games was not popping back in the day, as far as I know. Right. So uh THQ Nordic has acquired the rights to Kingdoms Kingdoms of Amular. Yes. Amular. Amular. Um, which is uh from 38 Studios. They didn't buy the studio, they just no. bought the IP, the King Kingdom of Amular IP. And uh like like uh Trinell was saying, this game hasn't I mean, we haven't heard anything on this franchise since 2012, 2013, 2014, right. something like that. Um, I, and like I said, it has a huge cult following. Um, well, Matt, let's say, yeah, a huge cult following. It's not a lot of people, but the people are very passionate about this game. Right. Um, and yeah, so we don't know. Based on what THQ has been doing in the past, they've been bringing these, they've been buying these IPs and bringing them back. And exactly, appara- yeah, and and swiftly too. Mm-hmm. And, and appara- the quickness. Apparently, there was an MMO ver- um, version of this in the works. It's just called Amular, M M Amular, whatever. Amular. That's how I could say Amular. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it was an MMO in the works that nobody had heard anything about, and they also gained the rights to that as well oh, with, wow. the, with this purchase. So um, it seems like. They're throwing their hats into the MMORPG realm, and instead of building one up from the ground, they're picking one up that's has a, a name. Yeah, because if, if there's anything that you can say about the Kingdom of Amalar IP is that, man, they did some world building for this game. Yes. Like, they build the hell out of this world. This universe is is, is vast. It's, it's expansive. Um, and, and there's a lot to it. Um tons of, of 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 reading material uh involved with uh with the universe uh and this game so you know the people that have been into it you know this this must be christmas for them mm-hmm. um, yeah, because uh, i actually they, own this game i got it in a humble bundle so i haven't tried it yet but i don't know man it doesn't seem terrible i might have to give it a shot yeah I'm, yeah yeah <laughs> i mean because I'm, I'm into you know the the action okay. rpg so i mean if, something i can subscribe to yeah I, I would say this if you already have it already in your library yeah definitely i, I wouldn't necessarily buy this right now at least not me um, right i have too many other 
world <laughs> world built games that I'm dealing with. <laughs> yeah. The point that won't even freaking work, guys. Oh my god, that is that is so heartbreaking, man. That is heartbreaking. I'm I'm uh not gonna get over that. But uh yeah, THQ Nordic man, just going out there picking up IPs left and right. So uh, yeah. I'm I'm excited. That they, they, um, they are building a huge conglomerate. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, why not? You know, need somebody to stand up um, and oppose, you know, these other conglomerates, right. EA, I mean, Activision, you know. Yeah, give some, them a, give them a chance. Something. I mean, it was first it was Ubisoft, was, yeah. They're going pretty big for their britches. So, you know, THQ Nordic is like, hey, there's room for us too. Exactly. And they, they, quite honestly, there is, because when you look at what the biggest the um, publishers are doing, Activision, EA, they're just putting out the same game every other year. Exactly. Yeah, and people are getting tired of that shit. I mean, yeah. people like me. But sure. um, but yeah, this is this is good news. This is this is great news, and I'm actually really excited about Dark Siders Three. Can't wait to play that game. TS another THQ Nordic exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. And now we're talking about Eve Online developer CPP Games, uh, because they were just acquired by Pearl Abyss, which CCP. is a company. What did I say? The CCP, right? Yeah, you said CPP. Oh, my bad. CCP. <laughs> my apologies. Um, yeah, they um, are the developers behind Eve Online, which is a, a game that we've talked about in the past. Um, and Pearl Abyss, uh, which just acquired them, they are the developers behind uh, Desert Storm Online. Yeah, de- yeah. Is it Desert Storm? Um, it's a shooter game. I know that for sure. I'm going to look it up in just a minute. I think it's Desert... Black Desert, my bad. Black Desert Online. That's the game. Um, So yeah, pretty much one MMO uh, RPG creator acquiring another one. Right. And, you know, EVE, EVE Online is another one of those games with a very dedicated following. Um, mm-hmm. know, I, I, if, you pl- if, they, if you play it, you really play it. It's either you play it or you don't play it. There's no right. casuals. There's no casually playing. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> That's an oxymoron right there. Yeah, I, ca- I play EVE Online from time to time. Like, yeah. you know, you're all in or you're not playing. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing. And, and EVE Online is, is the game that's had people... Is, isn't that... That's the game where there was a... Wasn't it like a clan or a guild where the dude, like, robbed them of all their money? Oh, Lord, nah. Nah, I didn't yeah, even yeah. hear about that one. That's yeah, crazy. So I'm pretty sure it's even online. So, you know, I guess he had, he was like, he was banker. Uh-huh. And the, the people, you know, they bank, you know, they, they put their valuables in his bank. He, he managed it. And he basically took it and sold it all for real world money. Yeah. <laughs> he just ripped the, he ripped the people <laughs> off. It was horrible. Um, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, EVE Online is a serious business in these days. And, oh, uh, Lord. I'm well, surprised that they were available to be purchased because I thought EVE Online was bigger than it was, but apparently it's not. Well, they are going to be able to um, continue business as usual right. according to the agreement. Um, they'll still retain, um, you know, all of, you know, everything that they do. So, I don't know. I guess it's just the owners just, you know, anteing up and just, you know, taking a paycheck and, you know, everything else just keeps going, you know, smooth sailing, I guess. Right. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah. I, I, I mean, because is this game still in early access or or whatever the process is called? Um, uh, final it, beta? It might be, yeah, it might be like, a, it might not be a final. Yeah, I don't think it's in its 1.0 uh, state yeah. yet. It, it could be right. I mean, it's, it's been a game since what, 2000? What's, What's that? Hell? Since when? 2003. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a new game. It's... No, not at all. It's been I, around for a while, so yeah. yeah so yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully some changes come to it. I mean, Evo Online isn't something that I that I play personally, so I could right. care less. Right. What about so you? look, uh, so I'm looking at I'm looking at, and one of the, one of the things in this thing is it's a whole virtual crime, and specifically this piracy mm-hmm. is part of the game, as is protection, racketeering, theft, and ransom. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's real life. Yeah, maybe this game is bigger than we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Uh, because Civ 6 is coming to the Nintendo Switch. All Nintendo fanboys rejoice. 
Your so, favorite franchise is coming to your console. So are you not entertained? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Nintendo stands. First thing, I want step back. This isn't the first time available. Um, Civ Six has been available on iOS. Right here now. Um, right, right. So you know, you see all the stories and all all the people. Oh, Civ Six is coming to mobile. It's been mobile. It's it's um, already been mobile. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's been the full game mobile. Um, but beyond that, yeah, Civ Six is coming. If you're a, a, a real time strategy guy person and you have a Nintendo Switch, um, you can now play, or you will be able to play Civ Six. I think is what November 16th or November 18th, right? I know it's a November teen date. It's either 16th or 18th. Uh, let me let me check it. Uh, 16th. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So November 16th, you'll be able to get Civ Six DLCs. It's going to come with the uh, Viking scenario. Um, Poland, Australia, Persia, and Macedon civilization and scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so all that stuff would be available for you on those switch uh, part and parcel. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, this this isn't you know bad news or like mm -hmm. something that isn't good, but it's like why do I need a news article plastered all over Twitter, all over the internet for a game that's already out coming to the Switch? It's like I don't need this. Right, because you know Nintendo. <laughs> and, and it's it's rumored that uh this game was supposed to be announced at the nintendo direct event mm -hmm. uh, because shortly after the story went up it came back down and it, it went up the time was peculiar as in it went up around the time that the switch event would have been over mm -hmm. i mean the, the direct would have been over so um, yeah, I don't know, man. The Nintendo's just being really weird. Nintendo fans are being really weird too. I, they just rejoice at any and everything that's coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I, was, I was talking to uh, Maury Jin, uh -huh. and I was like, "Cause I was like, are you excited?" He was like, "Man, I don't even know what a Civ Six is." <laughs> I was <laughs> like, "All awesome. right." <laughs> but yeah, I just think it's weird that we get these um, these news articles from, you know incredible sources you know just you know just gushing over the nintendo switch for like, like oh, yeah. i don't know but i mean it was a short news week so i understand why you posted it uh, here yeah. in, in the in our top stories but man for this to be trending was was ridiculous yeah like, and, and civ is not that big a deal right i mean it, yeah let's move on yeah we can go ahead and move on in that and then this is going to be our last story for the week and this uh involves valve yeah. And uh, the last time we talked about Valve, we talked about how they, um, you know, were changing the way that they um, curate their um, library of games. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, somewhat of an update to this. Uh, Boogie, right. why don't you go ahead and take us there? Oh, yeah, this is a two-parter. So they, okay. Valve is doing two things. Um, they, you know, they've been working to clean up their, their store. So the first thing that they're doing that they're added more filters. Okay. So we talked about this Valve, you know, and in, in their infinite wisdom, they said they don't want to police people's gaming. Um, they want let the people police the game, and they're gonna because um, this came out where when um, they were talking about that game. What's it called? Active shooter. So, that game, yeah, 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 yeah. The school shooter, and you know, people's like, how in the hell could you let that come on? And it's like, well, we're not gonna um, mute or or stop people from making that other people might like. Um, right. The first problem is. Anybody that likes that game should um, be checked out because yeah, that, you have, you got problems. Yeah, um, but you know it, it's just basically them trying to take a hands-off approach. And what they said is they'll build filters in so players can decide what they want to play, what they want to see in their on their storefront. And um, they are releasing one of these more bus filters so you can pull so so you can um, customize your storefront. So if you don't want to see um hentai literature games or if you don't want to see um vr zombie games or if you don't want to see uh whatever um you can filter that stuff out and mm -hmm. it won't show up on your storefront um eh, it's cool i guess yeah yeah um i think it's the lazy approach in my exactly opinion. yeah and that, that was um, my problem is that i don't go places to filter out you know the the selection that's something that, that you should be doing right um, I mean, and that's one of the reasons why I like Spotify so much is that all of all of the music that I listen to goes into helping them understand the, what music I want to listen to. Exactly. They need to work on that algorithm. Yeah. Because that's what everything else does. 
um, from your search when you when you search from when you search in Google to when you listen to tracks in Spotify to even when you buy games on Xbox and PlayStation Four store. For, yeah. Um, th- th- it, it says, okay, I see you bought God of War. Here's some other games like God of War. Exactly. Um, and, and you know, if, if Steam can't do that, you know, that's their problem. Yeah, one of the mine. biggest marketplaces in video gaming, period, can't curate its own marketplace. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm not going to log on to Steam and filter out, you know, content that I don't want on here. I'm just not going to use it. Right. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. Uh, I haven't really bought too many games on Steam. I haven't really been searching. Like what? Because you know, sometimes I'll have my brothers over, and I'll be like, "What do I want to play? Let's check out the Steam store." I haven't done that in, in forever. Right. Yeah. yeah the so. only game I bought off of Steam is which one? Ever. Monster Hunter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Monster I bought that, but that was already going to do. Um, Didn't have to then, search for it. This, the second part of this story is that they will now require developers to write their own content. Um, so if you have a game that has, um, you know, uh, sex in it, um, violence, the type of, and, and they wanted details, so you can't just say violence, mm-hmm. yeah, it's gun violence or it's gory violence or, you know, whatever it is, they have to, they have to write a descriptive, a description on it. And um, Valve said they're going to have moderators going through and checking these games and my guess is if the game doesn't fit whatever the valve uh um requirements are they're, they're going to get pulled or blocked or what have you but um again this is just another um valve just put, passing the buck right it's like yeah. okay you're gonna put it on our storefront but we're not going we're not going to give you any, any description to it you have to describe it yourself yeah i don't know man i don't know um it's looking more and more these days that valve is just you know not being too you know friendly um with the people that are trying to upload you know games to their storefront you know and and this definitely hurts indie developers and you know that's that's you know the first thing i think about is like man these indie devs are having a really hard time getting their games onto steam right because of all of these changes and and isn't that what they're paying for, right? They pay that thirty percent cut to Steam to to Valve to have this type of stuff done, right? Yeah. Um, to have their titles shown to people that that are playing games similar to theirs, to have their their titles properly tagged with the with the normal with their content um information, and now they have to do that. They have to spend time and money to do that, while. Um, the, the customers have to curate their own marketplace to even be able to see something like that. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. And but you know what I'm saying is the indies have to incur that cost while still paying Valve their thirty percent. Right. Um. This to me seems like kind of oh uh, something that will push more and more developers away from Valve. Yeah. Um. Because think of like, look, if I got to spend all this extra money to do all this extra stuff, and they're taking still taking the same amount from me, I'm going to go somewhere else. And you know, we talked about Discord opening their storm front, and there's still GOG, and there's still Humble out there. Yep. I mean, there's op- there's other options out there. There's even, you know, God forbid the the Microsoft Windows Store. I mean, there's plenty of places people can go and, and get a, a better service than what Valve seems to be offering at this time. Yeah, and uh, I'm a firm believer that that's what's going to happen. I mean, you've already seen. Um, a lot of indie developers take their stuff over to the Nintendo Switch, you know, and not just because of the portab- portability of the console, but because the marketplace is curated in a way that, you know, benefits them. Right. Their people, their games are going to be seen. Right. From people that are probably play their games and buy their games. Yeah. So it's, it's wild, man. It's wild. Um, and, and this is coming off the heels of announcements um, that, you know, Valve would like get back into games and, you know, you know, all this good stuff in the works for for Valve as a company as a whole. But they have really uh, tanked in terms of popularity on the Steam front, in my opinion. Yeah, they're, they're just not doing it. Just yeah, just not doing it for a lot of people. You uh, know, hopefully it doesn't go uh, much further into the rabbit hole than this, because this is bad. <laughs> Yeah, this is Valve has always been on the the good guy side of the fence, you know. Right now, they're not looking so good. Yeah, they're 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 right now on the fence. Right, make a decision what side (laughs) they want to. Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll have to wait and see. Uh, We'll we'll definitely keep be keeping our eyes on it. 
Uh, so now let's go ahead and get into the next section uh, because that was our five top stories for the week. Again, those are stories that, you know, were the most trending, uh, caught the most traction and ones that we wanted to focus on in this podcast. Um, and if you want to submit stories to us, you can also do that. Um, you can use uh, the links down in the description. Uh, you can also see them on the screen here. You can hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, uh, leave comments in the comment section on YouTube, send us an email, or if you are um, participating in our live uh, show, you can also leave us, um, you know, messages messages in chat as well. 